One of the biggest new features in Lightroom Classic CC, besides the better performance, is luminance and range masking. This is gonna mean a lot of photographers don't have to make the jump into Photoshop, which means your whole workflow can go much faster, which means you'll get off the computer and back to shooting quicker. I'm gonna show you how to use it first. I wanna thank our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 13,000 classes in photo design and more. Everyone can take a class, try a project, or even teach a class themselves. Premier membership begins around $10 a month for unlimited access. And the first 200 people who use this link will get a free two months. So check it out at sdp.io slash Skillshare 8 and use the promo code Northrop8. Let's jump into Lightroom. First, I wanna show off the color masking. So I'm in the develop module here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just use an adjustment brush. Now, this picture was taken at night. That's Michael the Maven, director of operations at the Salvation Army in Puerto Rico helping deliver food and water. So I was there kind of being a, a photojournalist taking pictures of them and they're being lit by an artificial light. And my D850 took its white balance from that artificial light, which gave the sky this really weird color cast. So what I'd like to do is to select just that sky and kind of fix it. So I got my adjustment brush here and I'm going to go ahead and select auto mask but you don't really need it for this. And well, let's turn on the mask overlay so we can see what I'm selecting. So I'm gonna to try to select it. Now, right away with auto masking turned on, you can see it's doing some really weird things. It's doing some haloing, right? You can see as it goes around his hair, it just looks awful. It won't even let me select this corner up here. There it goes finally. And well, that's, that's garbage, right? So let's just reset that. We'll turn off auto masking. And let's just paint in the background here. Now I am just over painting. I'm going over the edges like a kid who's terrible at coloring. I'm gonna fill all this in and just get the whole sky as well as this little bit of sky here. Now, what we're gonna do is use the range mask tool down here. It's almost hidden. It's such an important feature, but you might even miss it. I'm gonna change from off over to color. And now I just need to select the color range that I want to mask off and anything that's not that color, it's going to ignore it. If I want to add a little bit more to the range, I can hold down my shift key. You can see that turns the dropper into a dropper with a plus symbol. So I'm just gonna shift click a couple different areas around here. And you can see right away, it's already done a better job of masking. If I want it to mask more or less, I can just drag the slider up to mask a little more or drag it down to mask a little less but I do wanna get just a little bit into the edges there, just like basically simulating feathering in Photoshop. So with that done, let's turn off the mask overlay so we can actually see it. And I'm going to try to fix that color temperature in the sky. Let's make it, uh, let's see if we can just get this to be a little more natural color. Maybe I'll even just drop the saturation down because the sky was not actually teal, okay. So right away, this is looking pretty good. You can see because the sky was one uniform color, the range mask made an extremely useful tool for selection. Normally I would have jumped into Photoshop and done that because you can select by color range in Photoshop, but anytime I can get something done in Lightroom without having to make that leap, I get my job done faster. Let's jump over to an example of the luminance masking. This is also Michael the Maven and he's demonstrating how to use water filters for the people of Puerto Rico there who are drinking from natural water sources, which could be dangerous. Now, you can see I positioned myself so he had the sky as the background because I wanted to separate him from this kind of crowded backdrop as much as possible. So I created a lot of contrast with the subject, but at the same time, it's a ridiculous amount of dynamic range between the, the bright background. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, well, let's get this filter closed and I'm just gonna apply this change to the entire image. So I'm gonna Make sure I have a nice solid white point there first. And now what I wanna do is actually brighten up Michael some. So I could just drag the shadows up. That's one decent way to do it. But let's show how to do it with an adjustment brush. Again, I have the auto mask off. These tools don't work great with the auto masking. I'm gonna use this selected mask overlay and again, color it in like a clumsy kid, just going outside the lines you don't even have to worry about it. That just means you can go much faster, right? So this time in the range mask option, I'm going to select luminance. And 
instead of a dropper, I have a range slider here that specifies the range it's going to select all the way from zero, which is perfect black, to 100, which is perfect white. And I don't want to select the highlights, right? I just want to select the shadow. So I'm going to pull in the highlight slider there until I see that masking just narrow down until it's all just around Michael. And you can see if I go all the way down, only the darkest parts of Michael will be selected. But as I go up higher towards the top, it'll select more and more. So I'm just going to find that happy medium. There we go. So that's just about right. And now let's turn off that mask overlay. You know, it's not going to be perfect. And as I'm looking around, I can see that there's uh, a little bit here in the background that got caught. So I can always hold down the Alt key and just kind of remove that part of the selection. doesn't mean there won't be any manual adjusting. Sometimes there is still manual adjusting, just because the trees here in the background are also dark. So they were about the same luminance. And maybe I need to go back and pick this up a little bit. Okay. Now let's turn off that overlay and we can make adjustments just to Michael. Let's just raise the exposure here. That's generally going to look better than raising just the shadows. Let's add some contrast back in by dropping the blacks. And if I hit the Y key, we can see the before and after here. You can see that was able, that allowed me to really do a good job of selecting just the dark parts of the image. These tools aren't going to be the right tool for everything, but it's a great tool to have in your tool belt. It'll save you some round trips from Photoshop. Thanks Adobe for putting those in and thank you to our sponsor Skillshare. I want to quickly highlight a Lightroom tutorial that they have. This is almost eight hours of tutorial made by Thush Yanthan and a broke, broken apart across 86 short videos. So you can tear off just as much as you want. Look at all these tutorials they have covering just every single feature of Lightroom. It's downright amazing. And you can get access to this tutorial for free if you're one of the first 200 people to visit sdp.io slash Skillshare 8 and use the promo code Northrop8. I think once you log in and you see just how many tutorials they have about such a wide variety of topics, you'll definitely want to sign on past your free trial. So give it a shot and enjoy it. And if you don't yet have Adobe Lightroom, you can pick it up at sdp.io slash Adobe Deal. Thank you to our sponsors, Skillshare, and we'll see you next time. Subscribe for more free videos. Bye.